morning, Robert. Good morning, Betsy. How are you? I'm good. Good. Counting down the last days of 2020. Uh, can't be too soon, that's for sure. Uh, that would be a big 10 4. <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> What? What? What's on tap for you for New Year's? Are you going to watch fireworks in downtown Baltimore? Or? Absolutely. That's where I'm going. <laughs> no, I'm not doing anything. I'm staying off the road. <laughs> Good plan. That's what I said. We will huddle here with our dogs, hiding from fireworks. Do you see fireworks? Some, you know, we live in the country. There are people around here that shoot stuff off, lots of oh, firecrackers. Okay. How do the dogs do? Uh, kind of uneven. The Border Collie really hates the noise. Um, Sometimes it bothers Javier, sometimes not, because his hearing's not what it used to be. Carly could care less. Ah, oh, okay. Give him a sedative. <laughs> there are people who do that. I'm you know, I know. Not, not a fan of, of uh, giving medicines when they're not completely necessary. So right. I had my, my first border collie when I was uh, little, well, middle school and, and through high school, she was terrified of loud sound. She was like super gun shy, thunder, anything would just send her crazy. If, if I had known, you know, if I'd had access to a, a, a vet and, and stuff, I would have given her a sedative. She really could not tolerate. Wow. I but. never, I'll, I'll never forget <clears throat> one 4th of July when we were living in our house in Hyattsville. We had one room. <clears throat> and um, we had a dog and I was giving the girls a bath and my husband came in the bathroom to say something and all of a sudden all these firecrackers went off and all of a sudden then we also had the dog in the bathroom and I said there are one too many people in this little, <laughs> in this little room. <laughs> Everybody out except me and the kid <laughs> and maybe me too. Right. Here, you can finish, Bob, and I'm leaving with the dog. <laughs> oh, we're recording. Yipes, that's not good. Not yet. Not quite yet. You are recording. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. All right. Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer and Devotions with St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. <laughs> My name is Mike Looney, and I will serve as efficient this morning. The service follows the pattern of morning prayer in the Book of Common Prayer. And I will also read an excerpt from The Great Cloud of Witnesses. The people found in this book are not all definitively declared to be saints, but are Christians who have inspired other Christians in different times and places. This service will be recorded so, and shared so that others may worship with us throughout the day. Can I have three volunteers to help lead the service today? I'll help. Thank you. I'll help. Thank you, number two. I'll do number three, Mike. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Let us begin. Hark, hark, the wise eternal word, like a weak infant cries. In form of a servant is the Lord, and God in cradle lies. The sun of righteousness has dawned with healing in his wings. Let us come to the light of Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I threw you off there a little bit. Um, Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. To us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye, land, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his great gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Hallelujah. To us, a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us hear from the great cloud of witnesses. I invite you to listen with your eyes open or closed or take notes or draw or journal. At the end, I will offer a prayer. I invite you to share any responses to the excerpt and prayer during our fellowship time at the end of our service. So today, December 29th, we're reading about Thomas Beckett. Thomas Beckett was born in London in 1118 of a wealthy Norman family and educated in England and in France. He then became an administrator for Theobald, Archbishop of Canterbury. Later, he was sent to study law in Italy and France. And after being ordained deacon, he was appointed Archdeacon of Canterbury. His administrative skills eventually brought him to the notice of King Henry II, who, <clears throat> who to Thomas's surprise, appointed him Chancellor of England. He and the King became intimate friends, and because of Becket's unquestioning loyalty and support of the King's interests in both church and state, Henry secured Thomas's election as Archbishop of Canterbury in 1162. Becket, foreseeing a break with his royal master, was reluctant to accept. As Archbishop, he changed, as he tells us, from a patron of play actors and a follower of hounds to being a shepherd of souls. He also defended the interests of the king against those of his former friend and patron, the king. Um, sorry, he also defended the interests of the church against those of his former friend and patron, the king. The struggle between the two became so bitter that Thomas sought exile in an abbey in France. When he returned to England six years later, the fragile reconciliation between Henry and the archbishop broke down. In a fit of rage, the king is alleged to have asked his couriers, who will rid me of this turbulent priest? Four barons, taking Henry's words as an order, made their way to Canterbury, and upon finding the archbishop in the cathedral on December 29, 1170, struck him down with their swords. Later, when the monks of Canterbury undressed Thomas's body to wash it and prepare it for burial, they discovered that under his Episcopal robes, their worldly and determined archbishop was wearing a hair shirt. With such a garment hard while such a garment hardly proves that a person is a saint, it clearly indicates that Thomas was motivated in the exercise of his office by far more than political considerations. His final words to the four barons before receiving his fatal blow were, quote, willingly I die in the name of Jesus Christ and in the defense of the church. That is the end of our reading. Um, and Jennifer, am I to do right one or right two? It doesn't matter. 
I will do right one. O God, our strength and our salvation, who didst call thy servant, Thomas Beckett, to be a shepherd of thy people and a defender of thy church, keep thy household from all evil and raise up among us faithful pastors and leaders who are wise in the ways of the gospel through Jesus Christ, the shepherd of their souls, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray to Jesus our Savior. Christ, born in a stable, give courage to all who are homeless. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Christ, for whom the angels sing, give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Savior, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Christ, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. our prayer. Christ, before whom the wise men knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus, Savior, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Christ, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Savior, Hear our prayer. prayer. Jesus, Savior, child of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayer. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A Collect for Peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Either silently or aloud, let us offer our intercessions and thanksgivings to God. Prayers for our uh, son, Andrew, and his wife, Ingris, as they prepare to travel to Honduras to visit uh, her family. Prayers for Amy. Prayers for my son, Doug, as he deals with uh, some cancer surgery. Thanksgiving for this group. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, volunteers, for helping to lead our morning prayers and devotions. We will now end the recording, and those who wish to share in a time of fellowship are welcome to do so until 9 a.m., and I have to run upstairs real fast because my dog, you might hear whining in the bathroom, suddenly has to go out. I'm sorry, she's whining in the background.